All right, welcome everybody. Welcome into Mornings on Main Street on this Monday, November the 8th, 2021. The extra hours with spring forward, fall back. Hope you guys get an extra hour of sleep. And it's really weird driving in to the palatial studios in the mountains of Tennessee to see the sunrise because for the last four weeks, it was pitch black outside. But now it is the sun's coming up and it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful day. As we do every morning this time, let's bring in my best friend, the intern. How are you, buddy? I'm doing well, Joe. How are you doing? I see you got the plant behind you again. Thank you. Oh, yeah. All day. I'm never going to miss another day. Did you sign a lease with uh, uh, Shelly in our uh, office to use that plant? I sure did. Yep. Had it notarized <laughs> by the great state, great city of Lebanon, Tennessee. Thank you. Hey, uh, well done filling in for me on Friday. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Man, what you do is hard. <laughs> was it nerve wracking a little bit? It was. It was. But the people got me through it. Shout out to the people. Who's the people? Name a uh, name. Um, you know, just all Papa the followers. intern. Papa intern was there. Yes, he was. Okay, he was. it's he not was that bad, man. You just you just go with the flow. Right, right. I need to get better at that. <laughs> What's the one criticism you took away from yourself? Uh, no more ums. Just like I just <laughs> no did. I just ums. did it right there. <laughs> oh man, that's cool. Thanks for doing it, man. I appreciate you for all that right there. Anytime. All right, let's get to the latest headlines, and then we've got a new way to share the screen today, and I think it's fantastic. And Boom. Did that work? Next screen. Hold on. So stop that screen. Share, right? That screen. Hey, there we are. All right. Thank you, intern. I am technologically ignorant, but I'm getting better. So thank you, intern. Appreciate you. All right. Here's the latest Very headlines. Welcome. Main Street in Nashville, November 8, 2021. Now, the main story is, and we'll get to it at 720 with Terry McCormick, is the fact that the Tennessee Titans last night rolled to a gigantic win over the Los Angeles Rams. And as you'll see on the Main Street edition this morning, the story's up. Tit uh, the Titans went 28-16 to last night, and Adrian Peterson scored a touchdown. Vegas lost a lot of money. Yes, well, Vegas won a lot of money yesterday because of the Titans, because everybody thought they'd go out there and drop an egg, and they won the game. And so on this, this morning in Main Street, Nashville, there's a story. You can read it. Adrian Peterson. We have Terry McCormick from Titan Insider join us at 720. The game ended about 1045 last night. Titans won. They're now the top team all day in the AFC 7-2. and two. They have beat Buffalo – Kansas City, Indianapolis, and now went out on Sunday Night Football and just beat the Rams. 28-16, to 16, right? That's the score, but it was not even that close. So, Terry McCormick will join us a little bit, and we'll play some sound from Jeffrey Simmons here, too, as well. I'll just get you a few other headlines, which are going around here. Uh, it is, you can scroll down right here, Vivian Jones, another story, State Challenges. Vaccine mandate for private employees. You can read that in this morning's Main Street edition, e-edition. It's easy to sign up for. It's not expensive at all. All the latest news right to your inbox, wake up in the morning. And, of course, you have the app as well. So state challenges, that came out the other day, but Vivian with a nice story talking more about the mandates and what's going on there as well. Uh, another one, let's see, and I want to promote this too. We'll have this max when it's on later on this week, but with uh, Blood Assurance, let me go here. There I am. Blood Assurance seeks to, uh, donors to support veterans. To commemorate Veterans Day on Thursday, Blood Assurance will donate money to the Blood Center of America Special Forces Wounded Warrior Fund. So we'll have Max on this week. He's with Blood Assurance to talk about where you can go exactly where you can donate blood. We'll give you the, the locations for all that's happening this week for that that goes on. Uh, a nice story that's coming here from Taylor Courage about... Dee -dee -dee -dee. The traveling wall that heals comes to Murfreesboro this week for veterans. We'll talk a lot of veterans here this week, obviously, because they are so important to us. The men and women of the military are so important to us. And that I've seen this wall before, and it's 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 not the wall, obviously, the one in DC, but the replica, and it is stunning. And it will take your breath away. And people will show up and a lot of tears shed right there. And but it's if you get a chance to go out and see it this weekend. You can see that's happening at the Wall that Hills travels to Murfreesboro 
down there this weekend. All right, let's go back to the uh, the story that we had uh, with the, with the Titans, and that's every it's trending. Everybody's talking about it this morning. Uh, listen to the radio on the way in. They're all talking about it. Let's see if we can hear sound here with Jeffrey Simmons. Yes, this is after the game. I said Jeffrey Simmons had a monster game. This is from TennesseeTitans.com. All right, intern, here we go. Is that working? I'd mess that up too. Okay. All right, come back. All right, there we go. Anyway, we'll get uh, Jeffrey Simmons there talking about the game last night and the win they had over the Los Angeles Rams. He was an absolute beast last night when he did his thing. And they go, intern, you do whatever you need to do. So uh, with the game, the Titans now come back home on Sunday. They'll take on the New Orleans Saints at another big game. So Nissan Stadium better be sold out again for what's going on uh, with these, this team that's coming here. Because, again, who thought they'd be the top team in the AFC? But – here they are. They're rolling with that so far. And there we go. <laughs> I'm so sorry, man. I'll learn this one day. I'll learn what to do as we get it going there. I don't worry about it. We'll get it. That's all right, man. Okay. All right, intern. Thank you so much for happening there. We got this. All right. All right. So we're off and running today. Uh, I got five hours sleep this weekend. Thanks for all the well wishes on my daughter's wedding. I really appreciate it. It was a fun time. Oh, uh, down in Alabama, getting married. A lot of people there, and again, no sleep. But we'll get through today and have a fun show for you. All right, it's coming up at seven ten. It's uh, nobody trashes Tennessee. That's a big kind of campaign from Tennessee Department of Transportation. We'll show you some of that. Seven twenty, Terry McCormick from Titan Insider will join us. Uh, seven forty, Jason Goolsby with the Inside Dirt. And seven thirty, a very special story in a segment coming up of something that's opening up in uh, Robertson County and Springfield that we're going to show you guys today. It's very cool. Uh, it's going to help a lot of people out. So I'll have that for you when we come back. So up next, we'll take you to talk about Nobody Trashes Tennessee on this Monday, November 8th, 2021, as we get up and get going. Back with more when we come back right here mornings on Main Street. Dental coverage may be a small investment, but it has big benefits. Because dental coverage and preventive oral care leads to more than a healthier smile. It leads to a healthier life overall. Delta Dental makes it easy to get the care you need. With the nation's largest network, you're more likely to find or keep a dentist you love. And with comprehensive coverage and additional discounts, you'll have benefits you love too. Make a lasting investment in your oral and overall health with coverage from Delta Dental. Visit DeltaDentalTN.com to learn more. Hi, I'm Bonnie Ryan. I'm the co-owner of Zaxby's along with Lee Oliver. This is a place that mamas and daddies can be really comfortable to send their kids to for a first job. It's a place that you can have fun, feel really good about the place that you work, get paid well, have a good time. If you want to apply, you can go to applynow.com and Zaxby's will be on there. We uh, love it when we get some great folks here at Zaxby's. I was going through a really hard time in my life. I was missing 12 teeth. I would cover my mouth. Mentally, it was so draining to have to constantly worry about who's going to see it. Because your first impression in somebody is their smile. Delta Dental of Tennessee and the Smile 180 Foundation. Transforming lives and communities one smile at a time. My smile gives me my voice. My smile gives me my passion. My smile gives me my drive. My smile gives me everything. Who's that handsome devil there? Welcome back to Mornings on Main Street, off and running on November the 8th, 2021. Now, we're proud to help out with T Tennessee Department of Transportation, their Nobody Trashes Tennessee campaign that's going on. They asked me to be part of their campaign where I get interviewed by a red cup. You'll see in a moment what we're talking about. Last Friday, they had a kind of a community-wide cleanup over by Tennessee State and West Nashville. A lot of kids showed up to help out and clean up neighborhoods and streets. It was pretty cool, and it was a nice day for that. Just so cool to see all the kids getting 
getting together and cleaning the community and make this a better place all around for us to live in. Here's the, the story from Friday, and then you'll see an interview with Eddie George partook in this Red Cup campaign, nobody trashes Tennessee, and then you'll see my story as well. And you'll be enthralled, and you'll love it, and you'll talk about it all day long. All right, intern, hit it. Today marks the kickoff for No Trash November. No Trash November is a component of Nobody Trashes Tennessee. TDOT has created No Trash November to encourage others and to bring awareness to the litter issue here in the state of Tennessee. We are so excited to be on the campus of Tennessee State University where we have over 150 volunteer student athletes participating in a cleanup very close to campus on Ed Temple Boulevard. We have had over 300 volunteers and we're only at the 5th of November and we have over 33 cleanups registered across the state of Tennessee. And at any given time in the state of Tennessee there are 100 million pieces of litter on Tennessee roadways. Eddie George is very involved in this. He has committed his football team and he will be here later to help us um, kick off No Trash November. disclosure here i'm a huge fan of my next guest it's former heisman trophy winner nfl great and current head football coach of the tennessee state university tigers eddie george give it up for eddie welcome to my little playing field eddie uh question for you running backs are known as one of the toughest guys on the team and you were one of the toughest of the toughest a true rock'em and sock'em runner of the old pigskin that's right i did like to rock in the sock'em cup <laughs> yeah i know ouch uh i did a little digging on your background and i uncovered something interesting you majored in landscape architecture is that true that's true so you're one of those hard on the outside Warm and gooey on the inside kind of guys. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know about that. I just really love the great outdoors. Well, it must be hard to see so much trash in our great outdoors, right? It's terrible. Cup, did you know we have over 4,000 miles of scenic byways in Tennessee? I did not know that, surprisingly. Uh, my fact checker has been on vacation. <laughs> our job to protect those resources. There's nothing worse than seeing some ugly trash on our roadway. Ouch. Here, I thought I was sort of kind of, you know, handsome in a rugged plastic kind of way. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Go with that. Okay, I think I will. Um, well, what can we do to help, Eddie? There are a lot of groups across the state who need your participation in cleaning events. Great idea, Eddie. You have the URL you can share with my listeners, right? Sure, Cup. Just go to nobodytrashestennessee.com to see how you can be a part of the Nobody Trashes Tennessee movement. Perfect. Well, let's hear it for Eddie George, everyone. You know, I briefly thought about playing a little ball in my younger day. <laughs> I'm not seeing that. Well, it was like for a minute. Was thinking maybe a wide receiver? Hmm. We're kicking to you. Okay. Good show, everyone. Uh, can we cut his mic, please? All right. Thank you, Eddie George, for partaking in that. And now we see Nashville's media darling, in the same campaign. Please enjoy. I'm here talking about a big problem with someone who's got some big ideas about litter prevention. Let's give him a big welcome, Big Joe. Wow, thanks, Mr. Cup. That's pretty big of you. Thanks for having me. Ah, nice. Well played. <laughs> so, Big Joe, from one Emmy Award winning sports anchor to a soon to be Emmy winner, uh, what's with all the litter, right? 
Yeah, it's a mess, cop. You know, there are two kinds of litter, intentional and unintentional. Wow, I, I did not know that, which is surprising for me. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, keep going, Big Joe. Yes, sir. 28% of litter is intentional, meaning the person who tossed you out of that car, well, they did it on purpose. Uh, yeah, I remember that. I still can't believe it happened. So, if you do the math... 72%. Bingo. 72% of litter is unintentional. Well, I'm, I'm kind of a math whiz, in addition to being a great host. Yeah, so a lot of people don't even realize they're littering. Stuff accidentally flies out of their vehicles. We need to get that number down, you know? Got any ideas for us, Big Joe, besides having me personally go door to door telling people to stop littering, which, you know, I, I would do if I wasn't so busy shooting my new show, Talking Trash. I'm here for the people. Cop, here's a reminder. You can go to nobodytrashestennessee.com to join the movement to end littering. I love it. Let's give Nashville's media darling Big Joe some serious love, Red Cup Nation. Oh, thanks for having me, Mr. Cup. I appreciate it. You're my hero. i also let you know you're an inspiration to us all. No, thank you. I can just see the likes coming in right now. Stop. Just, just, just stop. I, I'm not even, I'm not worthy of any of these compliments. I'm not worthy of any of these likes. Uh, maybe I am. I don't know. <laughs> that, that's our show. Let's get out there and not litter. You can do it. Or... Not do it. Don't. Is it not do? Does that make sense? If you're not crying after you see that, well, then you probably need a little help. So thank you for T. Eddie George, Nobody Trashes Tennessee for doing that. And the Red Cup as well for getting the message out there. I get infuriated when I see people litter. So just stop littering. We won't have to run those spots. You won't have to see that commercial again. So uh, please don't. Please take care of our beautiful state. All right. Again, fun show for you this morning. 740, Jason Goolsby, the inside dirt, what's happening. 730, very cool story coming from Robertson County that I want you guys to be a part of. We'll have that for you at 720. Coming up next, Terry McCormick from Titan Insider about their big win last night. That's all right here on Mornings on Main Street. While federal coverage is really important, often I really think that a lot of the decisions that are going to impact you most are made at the local level. Like, um, where's the stop sign's going to go? What's your speed limit going to be? How much are you going to pay in property taxes? We talked about that a lot. Um, and, you know, how much funding the schools are going to get, um, zoning decisions that are going to impact, you know, which developers can come in and change the neighborhoods and, and grow the city. And all those decisions are going to be made at the local level. Good. I thought it was good. After every game, we always have a few. It's no big deal. It was no big deal. Hey, I can hold my liquor. I thought I could hold my liquor. Welcome back to morning. Well, there I am, uh, close and personal for you today. Welcome back to mornings on Main Street on this November 8, 2021. We'll be joined by Terry McCormick here in just a moment. But 
Andrew, I think we could do this. I think we can pull up some of the highlights from last night uh, for, yeah, there we go. Look at that. And I'll go up here and I'll press play. And then here's the Titans game last night. This is the touchdown. The tight end, Jeff Swaim. Nobody. So on this app that you can bet on, you can pick first touchdown, whoever scores the first touchdown. And the tight end last night for the Titans and Bayard scores and goes there. It was like plus 3,000. So it's crazy all the uh, all the bets you can do. And, of course, Vegas man, wants some money because nobody saw this happening last night, and that includes myself. So let's bring on Terry McCormick from Titan Insider with more on last night's big win. Terry, how are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm tired but good. <laughs> there you are. You're looking good, though, man. Proud of you, buddy. Thanks. For getting up early. All right, Terry, let's talk about it last night. Do you see this happening? Not really. I mean, I thought the Titans would give a better account of themselves maybe than a lot of people expected. But, uh, you know, I don't think anybody saw them jumping out 21-3 to at the half, and the defense was just unbelievable. Where, where's that performance been all year? Uh, you're right. And I, let's start up front with Jeffrey Simmons and the linemen up there. They just – they whipped the Rams up front line. What is even what is even close last night? Jeffrey Simmons with three sacks. He does it every week, Terry. What a force. Yeah, I mean, I think Jeffrey Simmons, he probably wouldn't admit it publicly, but I think, you know, the last couple of weeks he's gone against, you know, the Titans have played against DeForest Buckner and then Aaron Donald last night. That's the two guys who are generally recognized as two of the better defensive linemen in the NFL. And I think Jeffrey Simmons, especially in prime time, wanted the opportunity to kind of, you know, show that he belongs in that class as well. And he showed out with three sacks, like you mentioned. You know, it's funny. Collinsworth left it on the game, described the Titans. Look, he doesn't call Sunday night football. Doesn't call They don't call Titans games quite a bit, but last night Collinsworth talked about how, when you play the Titans, it is you're in for a fight. You're in for a street brawl. And I'm thinking that's a perfect way to describe this team. They're not flashy. They're not spectacular. They'll just fight you in the street, man. That was a perfect way to describe them, I think. Oh, absolutely. And I think that's Mike Vrabel's personality rubbing off on this team. I think Vrabel's the type of guy that's going to do whatever it takes to get a win. I think that was how uh, it exemplified his playing career when he was with the Patriots. And I think that uh, he's brought that with his coaching style. I think it rubs off on these players. Uh, you know, you look at the way this team, you know, overcame the loss of Derrick Henry. I think, you know, a lot of people thought, well, what's the offense going to do? And I think we saw that the offense is still a work in progress, but the defense steps up and answers the call, has its best game of the season by far. The running back by committee last night with Peterson and Foreman and McNichols, I thought it worked well. Yeah, it did all right. I mean, I don't think, any, you know, no nobody was going to confuse any of those guys with uh, Derrick Henry, but – the Titans were able to get enough from Peterson, from Foreman, and from McNichols to make it work. And it also helped the play action, you know, because that play action pass is kind of the bread and butter of that passing game. But without a decent running game, it doesn't really stack up and doesn't really work. But they were able to run the ball effectively enough that the play action worked, and they did it behind a patchwork offensive line. No Taylor Lewan, no Nate Davis last night. Do we consider them? I know record wise, they're the best in the AFC, but are they the best team in the AFC? I think if not, they're right there close. I think, you know, you look at Baltimore, you look maybe at Buffalo, despite what happened yesterday to them. I think those are probably the three best teams in the AFC right now. And I think that it's time to probably say that the Titans are one of the five or six best teams in the NFL. You know, you, you look and, you know, I mean, I know that people will say, well, they lost to the Jets, but since that time they've won five in a row and everybody in the NFL stumbles, you know, I mean, we saw Buffalo lose to Jacksonville yesterday, right. we saw the Giants beat the Raiders and we saw the Broncos mm -hmm. beat the Cowboys. So the NFL is not like, you know, it's not like college football in that every dog kind of has its day pretty much in the NFL, at least a couple of times a year. But, so I, but I do think the Titans are, one of the five or six best teams in the league. And dare we say it, 
they may be an, an actual Super Bowl contender, Joe. <laughs> Dare we say and they'll be playing at the same place we're showing the highlights last night from the Titans and the Rams. They get Super Bowls in Los Angeles, so they can go back there. And I said last night, Terry, when the Titans go back to the Super Bowl, maybe by then Al Michaels will, will know how to pronounce Kevin Byard's name. Yes, as opposed to Kevin Bayard. <laughs> Kevin Bayard. The other thing, Terry, what struck me last night watching this team play, you know, it's a mixed mash of players on this team right now. They played last night, Terry. John Robinson has been there since 2016. That means he's had six or seven times to draft in the first round. They only had one guy last night playing in the first uh, one of their first round draft choices playing last night Jeffrey Simmons no Conklin no Corey Davis no Dory Jackson no Rashawn Evans no Isaiah Wilson none of the guy that the guy they got from Virginia Tech so his job in free agency has been outstanding I think does that make sense it makes no sense because you would think that the bulk <laughs> of the roster would come from first round picks now he's had great success in the second round getting Derrick Henry getting A.J. Brown but uh you know when you're running guys out there like Bobby Hart. You know, I thought Bobby Hart was the guy who co-wrote a handful of the monkeys songs, but, uh, <laughs> but apparently left, uh, you know, plays for the Titans now. So, you know, it, it, you know it, it, it's just kind of odd that this collection of guys, you know, right. a lot of unheralded players that, you know, have been picked up from other places in a lot of cases or, are you know, undrafted free agents are coming in and making contributions. And to me, that's a credit not only to John Robinson and his scouting staff, it's a credit to Mike Brable and the coaching staff to get those guys coached up well enough to be able to contribute. Hey, who's the DB for Marshall taken in the sixth round that I never heard of until last night? Chris Jackson. He actually played very well. He did. <laughs> played very well. You know, it's funny because John Robinson, uh, general manager of the Titans, he's a guy that grew up in the OVC and, you know, in FCS football. So he loves these guys that don't get all the, uh, you know, the accolades from the Power Five guys. He makes a living off these guys. John U. Smith was a perfect example. Oh, no doubt. I think when you look at, uh, you know, some of the guys that are on this roster and look at where some of them are from and even even some of the undrafted guys who may be from a Power Five school, they were completely looked, you know, overlooked in the draft. Tier Tart, Nick Westbrook, Akina, you know, yeah. they've got they've got guys that didn't necessarily pass through the draft, but they basically tell them that once you're in here, you've got just as good a shot as anybody else. And, you know, judging from his track record, that's absolutely the truth. I love it. Before we let you go, we got to talk about Ryan Tannehill, Terry. I just I go back to two years ago when the Titans played in Denver and Marcus Mariota put on possibly the worst performance by a quarterback I've ever seen in the NFL. They bounce him out. Tannehill comes in and he's just taking this team and run with it. F fantastic last night. Yeah, I mean, he shook off the early interception when he threw that ball. Just didn't have enough zip on it to, to complete that out route to. A.J. Brown and Jalen Ramsey jumped it, intercepted it, and you're like, uh-oh, could be trouble here because you know that the passing game is going to have to contribute more with Derrick Henry out. But Ryan Tannehill remained cool, calm, and collected, led this offense, and uh, really kind of directed everything out there for the offense because I think he knew that he wasn't playing with a full deck uh, you know, out there without Derrick Henry, but he got enough done, and then with the help of the defense, the Titans turned in a dominant performance. I haven't played with a full deck in probably 25 years, Terry, so I know the feeling. <laughs> oh, Joe, I'm going to All right, Terry, thanks, brother. We will talk to you next week. They take on the Saints, and hopefully this train keeps on moving along, man. Thanks, Terry. All right, see ya. All right, man. Terry McCormick from Titan Insider. If you go to MainStreetMediaTN.com, you click on Publications, Titan Insider is right there, and Terry does a great job. All right, we'll take a break. Come back. You're watching Mornings on Main Street. I look at it as building relationships. I've got, uh, my phone has got the phone number of every head football coach, every basketball coach, every baseball coach, every softball coach, every athletic director in Wilson County. 
in it. If something ever happens to me, that phone's going to be a, a pretty good commodity for somebody. And I've known these people. I grew up in Wilson County. I went to Lebanon High School. I went to Cumberland when it was a junior college. I, I, I am now covering uh, even some grandchildren of guys I went to school with. I think, I think journalism is like politics. It's all local, and uh, and I think Main Street Media has really, really hit on something that I've been preaching for 50 years. And keep keep the news local, right? Right, local stories for local readers, and that's what I like about Main Street Media. I finally found somebody who agrees with me <laughs> philosophically about concentrate on on local subjects, local topics, and uh, you, you'll you, you'll you'll bring your readers. All right, welcome back to Mornings on Main Street right here on November the 8th, 2021. Let's bring in now Sean Elmore. She's executive director of the Open Door Pregnancy and Resource Center in Springfield and Robertson County. Uh, Sean, good morning to you. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, big day, big week, big night big tonight day. that's happening for you guys. Let's talk about the Open Door Pregnancy and Resource Center. You guys just opened. Tell me about the whole process of coming together for this. Well, we opened in 2008, and what we've done is uh, we've opened a new pregnancy center um, location. What we've done is expanded our resources um, from about 1,500 square feet to 6,200 square feet. And so um, we've used our previous location as a connecting company. So what we've done is we've taken a, a tiny little ministry and expanded um big, large, and huge. And so we are um, loving our community and expanding services. Um, that's uh, our website. It's very, very actually simple. Uh, yes, big it Joe. Is. Thank you, Big Joe, for, for um, having us this morning. This is my partner in crime, Stephanie. We've been uh, friends for over 30, 40 years, I guess now. And um, we've worked together. She's our social media um, and resource uh, for um, you know, what we do in, in the community. So we are a local pregnancy center. We thought when we opened in 2008 that we would help one person make a decision that they could live with. And now we're seeing um, what we say we're a John 10, 10 ministry. And what's so beautiful about that is we want to see folks have abundant life. And we went into this saying, let's pray for people. Let's give them um, ways to make a a decision that, uh, you know, we can we can give all options and, and, and help people through this. And so we, we wanted to help people with formula and diapers if they chose life. And, you know, the whole abortion subject was so taboo and it still is. We said we want to support that person with post-abortion counseling, things that, you know, people just need help with. And we had such an explosion of services in our small community and our community support is so unbelievable that now we have expanded into areas of um, parenting and we work with the court system with DCS and we are seeing families reunited and graduations. Uh, we have we work with fathers. We just had a dad get his children back. So beautiful oh, things great. coming. That is fantastic. All right. So let me get, so this is anybody can come and see you guys, correct? Absolutely. Not only limited to Robertson County, we have people from different counties also that will, that will find us and need help. We had a guy from Hermitage or Nashville that came to us this weekend that just needed clothes for his kids. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And the website, it's looks like it's a phone number, but it's 615-384-HOPE.org, correct? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's our website and our phone number. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the new facility. Did you guys just open the, or the new location? This just opened, right? The new location. Yes. We moved locations. We brought Open Door to 1109 Main Street here, right here in downtown Springfield. Um, we had been praying and looking for a location probably since about 2010. We knew that when we bought the original location, that we wouldn't be there long. Um, we were there for 13 years and we were um, put in there like cordwood. Stephanie and I shared an office the size of my desk. 
uh, here now. <laughs> uh, we work back to back. It was so tiny. Um, and what we ended up doing was praying and, re and believing. One of the things we had several offers, we had several location places that we looked at. We probably looked at 25 different pieces of property. And I um, had a, a good friend that called and said, hey, there's this building for lease. And I said, well, we want to buy something because we want to make it our own. We knew what we wanted. We knew we needed to build out. We knew we needed small, intimate rooms that were multifunctional. And what ended up happening was this building that we are sitting in was was um, for lease. And um, I came and looked at it and I said, God told me that was our building. And the guy said, it's not for sale. And I said, it is. It's mine. <laughs> God said it was ours. And uh, we had a church that a local church that said, we want to give you a space and whatnot. And we graciously declined because we knew that the Lord was speaking directly to us about um a prayer list that we had ongoing since about 2010. That's the, the farthest back I can find. And everything and more was here. Um, the day that we graciously declined within about 48, 24 to 48 hours, we received a $200,000 anonymous gift. Whoa. Um, so we purchased this property in cash in a COVID, um, you know, a pandemic uh, year. <laughs> right. We renovated and we also are now debt free here in this location. So we are governed by a board of directors. Our board of directors would come and literally just pray and believe we had prayer groups would come. Um, I told one of the girls that was on staff with me, I said, the Lord said that he's going to redeem this building like Rahab, warts and all. Like we, like our women, our, our families that come in here are broken and they just need hope. And so my t-shirt this morning, the back of it says, hold on to hope. And I feel like at times, you know, we are able to just, just do an, uh, just a, an olive branch of hope to someone. And, um, I had a father, um, that I was, um, given in court this past year and he would come in here. He's very angry. And he came in here and I said, we, he said, Miss Sean, until I came in here, I had no hope. And so he's been reunited with his kids. Um, we get to help him this year with Christmas. And it's such an honor to get to come to work every day, to get to love on that one unlovable person, one person that's just broken. And so we are here today. Um, we have a huge fundraiser tonight. It, we do two a year. This is it's a chili challenges tonight here in Robertson County. Ten dollars at the door, five dollars for kids. Um, we are just just walking every day um, in, in the hope and the promise. When we unlock that door, we pray that, you know, that one person walks in today that we can help with diapers and formula. And what we do is we want to teach a man to fish for a lifetime and not just give them a fish to feed him for a day. And we're seeing lives change. We have a newsletter that's coming out. We have an end of year letter that's coming out. The newsletter is a girl um, that was a heroin addict losing her children and um, one of the things was she was very angry to have to come to our parenting classes, but her life is completely turned around. She's three years sober. She's actually oh, volunteering yes. here with me and giving the other person, you know, on the other end of that saying, hey, if I can do it, you can do it. Um, I walked out of the room that she was mentoring one of our clients and she, I was just bawling. I was just oh. crying, saying that is Revelation 12, 11. You know, he, the enemy is overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. She's testifying to that person saying, if I can do it, you can do it. And, and we're just walking alongside these folks, um, hold their arms up when they can't hold them up their self. So I, I'm going to come to Springfield and just get a hug. Is that okay? Hey, well, you I would love for you to come. You're my favorite on air personality. I want you to come visit us. Oh, hey, you're so I, sweet. I, I appreciate it. Hi, Stephanie. Hey, it's nice to finally meet you. Yes. <laughs> yes divine connection. Your, your divine connection for us. Yeah, that's <laughs> so great. I, I was going to tell you, Sean, that you talked about that building and the plan. And I, what came to mind is we cannot outsmart God's plan. Amen. We try. We try every day, yeah. but we cannot outsmart God's plan. And so hearing your story and your testimony and seeing Stephanie there with you, the community come together, I mean, what, what is the, an asset you are for people, not just there, but around Middle Tennessee? 
Thank you. Let me tell you, this building was in total disrepair. And they would tell me that it needed a hundred thousand dollar roof. And I'd say, no, the Lord says it just needs to be repaired. And it was like 15,000. <laughs> when you see the pictures, I, the first contractor would not take the um, project because it was, he said, run, he said, do not take this. And the Lord kept saying, no, this is your place. Yes. The, the fi five star company came in and did an incredible job. And the poor guy that was with me kept saying, you're, he would look at me and go, your visions are too much. I'm like, nope, this is the vision of the Lord. And <laughs> you look at it now and you will not, the pictures don't do it justice because it, it was just unreal. So people that come in with the, and, and, and all our funds come from the generosity of the community, but the Lord multiplies and people that have come in here and looked at us at our ribbon cutting a few weeks ago, cannot believe their eyes. And uh, it's, it's amazing. It really nice, is beautiful. All right. So, Tonight, the Civic Center, 6 p.m.? Mm -hmm. 401 Main Street, uh, North Main, at the Civic Center in Springfield. Absolutely, 6 p.m. All the, the chili, chili you can eat. Chili all the chili you can eat tonight. And so it benefits uh, the Open Door Pregnancy and Resource Center. Uh, Stephanie, thank you. Uh, Sean, I'll talk to you one second. But Stephanie, thank you for reaching out and the email a few weeks ago and getting all this started. And Sally as well. Sure, thank you. It's, yes. because of, it's because I tell this all the time. People will always say, well, I was going to email you, but I don't think you'd respond. Well, you already got your answer if you don't email. That's so if right. you email us, there's a great chance that we will get you on and promote you and lift you guys up like we did today. So, Stephanie, thank you. Sean, uh, your passion is just its just coming through the screen. Thank you for what you do for so many. Thank you for um, having us today and letting, giving us a moment just to, just to say thank you, not only to God, but just our community and how they've supported our families you know, we're seeing lives change, moms and babies that are and fa now fathers. We're seeing fathers, mentors. Uh, we have a, a guy that's a mentor. His name's Ben. And seeing him mentor to these men, teaching a man to father. If you look at statistics in prisons and um, families, you know, 96 percent of those guys in, in the prison system are fatherless. Fatherless homes are huge. And so that's been a passion of mine in the in the past, but recently seeing, wow. So we're wanting to see those fathers be mentored to become the men that they need to become to, you know, to be in the home. Beautiful. Sean, Stephanie, thank you guys so much. We'll keep promoting the chili cook off tonight. And anytime you need anything, please reach out. And, Thanks. and congrats on your daughter and her wedding this weekend. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you to say, thank you very much guys. Thanks for having us. All right. That's the Sean Elmore and Stephanie. Uh, Doris with the Open Door Pregnancy and Resource Center up there in Springfield. Chili cook-off tonight, 6 p.m. at the Civic Center. You heard their passion, their stories from that area tonight. You can make it. Please go by and see them. All right, we'll take a break. Coming up, it's the one and only Jason Guseby with the Inside Dirt. I have no idea what we're going to talk about. That's what makes it fun. That's next right here on Mornings on Main Street. <laughs> Main Street Media was founded by Dave and Ellen Gould in 2013. It all started with three newspapers in two counties and just 3,000 subscribers, and the company only had 10 employees. Eight years later, Main Street Media owns and operates 13 newspapers, 18 websites, and social media pages all over Middle Tennessee. They produce podcasts, videos, and streaming news shows, the company now has 60 employees, and across all their platforms, they reach more than 2 million people a month. Main Street Media's newspapers regularly win awards from the Tennessee Press Association, 
and have been recognized several times as having some of the best weekly newspapers in the state. Main Street Media has reporters in all of its communities covering local news. Nobody covers high school sports like Main Street Media. With 10 full-time reporters and an army of freelance writers and photographers, Main Street Media tells the stories of local teams and people. All right, welcome back to Mornings on Main Street. Man, that's a close-up of me right there. There we go. Thank you again to Stephanie and Sean at the Open Door Pregnancy Resource Center in Springfield. I love your passion. Thank you for what you do for the community. Uh, I would thank this next guest for what he does for the community, but that's kind of redundant because he we thank him every single day for everything he does. Let's bring in Jason Goosby with the inside scoop here in around Middle Tennessee and Wilson County. Hi, Jason. What's up? Doing all right. I see you got your lighting issue not fixed. Yeah, I need tips. <laughs> <laughs> Let the light shine in your face, not behind you. Okay. Hold on. Uh, it's good. This is good TV right here. Is that better? So that there you good? go. That's like when you take a picture and you're outside. Let the sun, the sun is the greatest light we have. Let the sun hit you in your pretty face. And that's how we have it. Hey, I want to know where the video is of you crying like it's the first day of football practice at Sanford University this week. <laughs> I did. You know what? Everybody tells you that when your daughter's getting married, you're going to cry, cry, cry. So I did my best not to cry. The only time I cried was, and I'm not going to make this about me because I hate talking about myself, was in the reception hall. They have a table set up for loved ones that have passed away. And there's a picture of my mother and me at my wedding oh my to my God. daughter's mother. Uh, that got me because I was not expecting that. And it's a beautiful picture of my mom that really hit me hard. And so I had to compose myself, but it's a celebration. I mean, my daughter married a beautiful, loving Christian young man who thinks that she hung the moon. So I, it's happy. I'm happy. I mean, she's, she's beautiful. He's a great kid. And I look forward one day, Jason, to walking you down the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> That didn't sound weird at all, y'all. Uh, hey, That's so, best friends. Uh, yeah. Hey, I, I do want to say, uh, man, I just love, I was looking at your social media posts uh, this weekend. And I, and when you see tight families, families that love each other and all this world, and we have so much dissension and stuff, I, I just love it. it. It makes my heart happy when I see families that love each other, people that love each other. And so, dude, I enjoyed watching uh, well, I appreciate it. I, you know, I, this, my story is well known. I grew up without a father and so I had a beautiful, wonderful, strong mother. So I was going to stop the, the, the right. generational curse of no dad because my dad didn't have a dad and on and on and on. And it stopped with me. I was, it was not going to go mm -hmm. on and on and on. Anyway, enough about me. Thank you for the kind words. What's happening up here. Well, and that's one of the things that that lady talked about in the last segment was about the follow. So good for you, Joe, you said you were going to stop it. Um, so we have at the corner of 231 North and Tucker Trice Boulevard, um, we have um, a development that's going on. A lot of people have messaged me asking what's going on there at that place. And they're like, hey, Jason, is it going to be a restaurant? Please tell me it's not going to be another car wash. And I'm like, well, it's not going to be either one of those. So the news is good. So we have uh, 18 townhomes going up at the intersection of 231 North and Tucker Trice Boulevard. And for those of you guys that are wondering where, where Tucker Trice is, Tucker Trice is by the old golf course that is being uh, that has been developed over the last couple of years. My apologies to the intern. I meant to take a picture of that and send that to him. I apologize, intern. My bad completely. So we have those we have those townhomes going up. And uh, you know, Joe, a lot of people when they hear townhomes, they're like, oh gosh, that's just what we need. More townhomes. <laughs> We're, we're the next Antioch, no offense to those in Antioch. Um, I'm sure none taken. None taken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being honest, man. That's the only thing I know to do. So, uh, but but I, I will say this, you know, if, if we do not build something other than uh, single family homes and they have their place, believe it or not, there's more single family homes being built in Wilson County than townhomes. And it just looks that way. That would like it's not 
But if we don't, we talk about affordable, affordable housing. If we don't build some of the townhomes, then our generations that are coming up, the people that are born and raised here are not going to be able to buy starter homes to start their lives out here because the cost of housing will be so expensive. Hold so, on a second. So people complain about townhomes being built? Oh, yeah. 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 They, they liken them to apartments. Yeah. They don't want pe people and the people, the Lebanesers, uh, as I call us. Uh, us Lebanon, Lebanites, Lebanonians, whatever we are, uh, yeah, the, the not not fond of townhomes. But uh, you gotta people gotta have places to live. People gotta have places to live, and you just can't assume that you build a townhome that all eighteen families are gonna come in there and be the worst people on planet Earth. Right now, you can't. And 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 here's the thing about it, Joe. Some of these town, I don't know about these townhomes specifically, but I know some townhomes here in Lebanon. These townhomes are three hundred grand a piece. It's not like this, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, yeah, and so uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a thorny subject. And uh, Is, do they have a start uh, or a completion date for these? Uh, no, not not that I know of. That's one of the things I'm not necessarily privy to when I go and look at the with the city and look at when I when they submit plans, that's freedom of information act. I can go to the city and look at whatever they have submitted because that's or right, right as American. Yeah. And, uh, so, but that, that, that information's not, uh, on there. So in, in your real estate world, I mean, do you get calls from people all over the country? I have, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mostly, uh, I'm about a lot of, people. you know, uh, one of the number one places people move from, to Tennessee and you, you'd be surprised at this It's Florida. And, uh, we have a lot of people that have either left and, and they have went to Florida and they get down there and they realize that they, they miss for having four seasons because uh, most of Florida, especially the group or the seasons. That <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, so, um, yeah, we have a lot of people that move back to Tennessee from uh, Florida or they've moved to Florida from other parts of the country. And then they're like, you know what? Uh, it stays hot down here. A lot of time of year, I miss four seasons. So, Well, J uh, Dawn on our chat says they've torn down two homes and put four in its place on Trousdale Ferry. Looks like a jigsaw puzzle now. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Thank you, intern. Hey, Don. Um, yeah. Um, but I would say most of the time – I think they, these townhomes are um, in the city of Lebanon and Mayor Bell, they are changing the standards and the design standards uh, to make these townhomes um, um, look more pleasing to the eye. And I, you well, know, and here's the thing. Go ahead. I was going to tell you that little emoji that Dawn put up there looks like you with a scrunchy face. Uh, <laughs> 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 I also got, I also have some good news. I want to, uh, I had one more tidbit of information for you. Uh, this is not going to cost us. It's not going to cost you. It's okay, free. Good. Go. This, is like, this is like overtime basketball. It's free basketball. <laughs> uh, so uh, there is Scoops. Scoops is uh, a, a local a little Italian restaurant that's kind of close to the square on West Main. Uh, those those uh, Frankie down there, and it's a he calls Frankie Scoops. He's a true Italian. If you've ever met him, he's he's from New York. I'm writing it down. Yeah. And so Scoops. Well, they have, he and his wife have um, secured a lease for a spot down on the square. So they're going to be opening up uh, an Italian restaurant on the square close to Wilkie's Outfitters down there. Where's and he located? Where's Scoops located now? So Scoops is there by Sushi Max. And uh, if you're... If, from your direction, coming off of the square, going down West Main, they will be on the left, close to uh, Sushi Max and where uh, Cox's uh, Jewelry used to be. They just recently went out of business. We should get him to sponsor your segment. We should, and he is uh, he is a great guy to talk to. He is Joe, he is the closest thing to. Uh, Joe Pesci we have in Lebanon, Tennessee. Then what are we waiting <laughs> on? All right, so hold on, Goolsby. Take a break. We're going to come back. Celebrity birthdays. You and the intern are going to do this. Right. And I'm going to call Frankie at Scoops. You call Frankie. I got his number. I'll give it to you. All right, intern, hit the break. Back with Celebrity Birthdays next. Every year, 
it costs Tennessee more than $15 million to clean up roadside litter. It's time to keep your trash to yourself and our roadways clear because nobody trashes Tennessee. Is your roof in need of repairs? Maybe it's time for a full roof replacement. If so, choose Middle Tennessee's number one rated roofer. Tim Leaper Roofing has provided the Nashville area with outstanding residential and commercial services for nearly two decades. And with hundreds of five-star reviews, Tim Leaper Roofing has satisfied thousands of homeowners. To schedule a free and honest estimate, find us online at timleaperroofing.com. All right, welcome back here to the final segment of Mornings on Main Street. Time for Celebrity Birthdays. We, uh, we've had a fun show. Terry McCormick, thank you. Sean Elmore, thank you. And now Jason Goolsby from the uh, Inside Scoop, thank you. All right, guys, you ready for this, Celebrity Birthdays? Oh, yeah. Going All right, down, first up today, guy. all right, Jason, you get to go first because you're older. Uh, <laughs> let's go with today's Bonnie Raitt's birthday. How old is Bonnie Raitt? Oh, Bonnie Raitt is 65. Intern. Bonnie Raitt is 61. Incorrect. 72. Ah. Uh, Alfre Woodard. Oh, I know her. Uh, yes. Uh, she the beautiful is, Alfre Woodard. Yeah, she is. She's probably 65. Uh, I'm going to go 73. 69. Come on, guys. Oh. That's ridiculous. Uh, Gordon Ramsay, the chef, celebrity chef. Yeah. Yeah. Gordon Ramsay. He's really mean. 58. Uh, I'm going to go with 64. Ooh, 55. You're both wrong. Oh, Y'all are terrible. Uh, let's go down here with, uh, here we go. Uh, former Entertainment Tonight host, Mary Hart. Oh, yes. Now, Mary is probably about 68. I'm going to go 61. 71. Oh, oh that's, that's not terrible. Hard. Singer, actor, Leif Garrett. He was a teenage superstar yeah. in the 70s. Right. Uh, Leaf is 62. I'm going to go with uh, 65. He is 60. Good job, Goosby. You're up one yeah. Yeah. Uh Jack off. Osborne, Ozzy's son, Jack Osborne. He is, uh, Jack is probably about 32. Ooh, I was going to say 34. Wait, I'm gonna say, well, go ahead. What were you going to say? Go, go ahead. Say something. Uh, I'd like to. No, I'm going to stick with 34. He's 30. Wait, who are we talking about? Jack Osborne. Yeah. Jack Osborne. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> he's 42. Sorry. I was going to say no, 41. Wait. I was going to change. No, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. He's 36. Intern, you got it. Hey! Oh. I've got I got a lot of stuff going on in my head here. He's Reviewed. good. He tied at one. Reviewed the play. All right. Let's finish off with country singer, lives in Nashville, Lauren Elena. Lauren Elena. Lauren Elena. Oh, uh, Lauren is, uh, she is. Uh, 26. Ooh, I'm gonna go with 29. And the winner, Jason Gooseby. Oh. He's 27. Oh. Hey, 27. A girl I went to high school with you, it was at her teacher down in Georgia. So, insider I'm training, angry. yeah, inside it is insider training. <laughs> Gooseby, thank you. We'll get a hold of Frankie Scoops and have some Italian food. All right, <laughs> see you, brother. Thank you. See you next uh, Monday, 7 40. In turn, you're doing you're getting better though, buddy. <laughs> hey, you're getting better you. sorry i was off my a game today i'm back i got four hours sleep in three days so i'm better now all right intern thank you buddy all right that's the show for today tomorrow 7 30 miss cheap will join us always fun looking forward to seeing her every week right here yeah, thank you all so much uh for joining us every weekday from seven to eight my brain is scattered okay i'm getting back in now right here mornings on main street uh we spread the positivity we spread the local stuff that's happening in the community make everybody feel a little bit better about themselves again get out there today let people in traffic wave at people open doors smile let's make this world a much better place we'll see you guys back here tomorrow